I'm starting to separate myself now. Yeah. So there's two kind of themes that emerge from that. One is this idea of taking souls, right? right? This, this, this sense that, hey, I came from nothing and I'm here amongst the best. And then starting to realize like, hey, these people are human. Right. How can I get my tactical advantage? Right. And you explore this idea of taking souls, which, which essentially is going places no one else is willing to go to right. fuck with their heads. That's it. Right? That's it. To, I, get, to get like the upper hand on, the, on, a, on everybody else. When you grow up weak and you start to master your mind, because my whole thing is whenever I'm, whenever I'm weak at something, whenever I'm scared of something, I master it. I was a weak, mind, you know, a weak minded person, so I mastered my mind. And in mastering my mind, I mastered the human mind. And I realized why I no longer judge people, why I no longer put people on a pedestal, because we're all fucked up in our own way. We all have demons. Some people hide them better than other people. So I know we all have them. But me knowing that, I know the most alpha males are very fragile. Very fragile. They never want to see another person harder than them. Especially in that kind right, of realm. The ego attached. The ego to oh, very strong. Ego will fuck you up every time. Ego is serious. So if I can hurt your ego, I got you. Thousands of lives I'm changing by the hell I went through. There's a lot of power in that. So my purpose, as I started going through this journey, instead of looking at like, "Whoa, is me, God, man? Why, why the fuck, man? Why, why?" I started looking at it's the perfect training ground. You knew exactly what you were doing. You know exactly what the fuck you were doing, obviously. You put me in every situation possible to tell a story that needed to be told. Yeah, looking back, it's like every domino is lined up perfectly to create the person that I'm sitting across from right now. And also, you took advantage, you leveraged all of those opportunities to be that best version of yourself. Mm -hmm. I did. As, 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 as afraid of that, I mean, it was a very scary, scary road. A guy who was afraid of a lot of things. To then find power in fear. To find power in overcoming fear. And to get to where I'm at today where there's very few things I'm really afraid of because I know how to control it. I know how to manage it. I know how to work it to my advantage now. It's, it's, it's something else, man. I, so I really challenge people to really do a live autopsy on your brain. And the reason why I talk about my childhood so much in this, because I don't want you to put a title on me. Because once you title me as a freak, you now put yourself in a position where you can be very comfortable in saying, it's just not possible for me. Yeah. But, so elaborate on that a little bit. So for me, that's why I want to become a Navy SEAL. I wanted people to push me outside of my comfort zone every day. You know, and I thought this was going to be the absolute best platform to do that. These guys, the stories I heard after Buds, it just gets harder. And I didn't see it that way. Because Buds is just to become the seal. That's right. right? I'm like, my God, yeah. I can't imagine what the fuck's going to happen. But what happens to a lot of people, not everybody, can't speak for everybody, I don't know everybody. Buds breaks people down to the point where you don't want to be broken down again like that. To me, that was exactly the exact starting point for my journey in life. That was the starting point for me. For a lot of people, it's the finish line. And I didn't see it that way for me. So that's where I started becoming uncommon amongst uncommon people, is where I started realizing that you put people on a pedestal that you shouldn't. That you, you gotta get in there yourself and examine people. See what's really about yourself. So once I got in there and realized, hey, these are just normal people. Yeah, they're a lot better than some. They're able to get through. I know a lot of people who can get through Navy SEAL training. But, you know, there's a lot of mystique behind behind all that stuff. And, I, and as you start to go through and you start to break it open a little bit, you know, a lot of hard guys, but, you know, I, I want it more. I want it more. And this, this is your strength in certain respects. It's a superpower that you have, but it's also your Achilles heel. Big time. Big time. I talk about it in the book a lot, too. Uh, one thing that hurt me a lot was... I thought everybody wanted the same thing I wanted. And everybody wants the same thing you fucking want. Everybody wants to get up at four o'clock in the morning and beat yourself and find more about themselves and shit like that. And I thought the Most seals did. Don't. Most people don't. Yeah. And I thought the seals did. I thought that's what, you know, because every book you read, that's what that's what everybody does. So I, I was hook, line, and sinker. So that mentality that I had, it kind of put a uh, bad taste in my mouth, you know, once I realized that not everybody was like this in the community. 
the best I could. And trying to be a pararescue, and I finally passed the ASVAB test after you know taking it several times. And you know when you cheat your whole life in high school and elementary school, I had about fourth grade reading level. So I talk about that a lot in the book, and I had to learn so much school in six months. And that's when I really developed my work ethic. People think it's from running, and everything. No, it's not from seals, not from running. It was from the countless hours teaching myself how to fucking read and write. You know, we, you know, I had a, a tutor for one hour, one hour every single week. That's all we could afford. So for six months, I saw a tutor one hour a week. All the rest was on me. My mom was working three jobs. She was never home. I sat at this fucking table. I, I'm like, I, I have to get in the military. And that became my well, this is the whole book is really about mindset. All of that it. is the the whole game. And I and I would agree that people look at you and they want to talk about bad water and all these races that you've done. You know, eight one hundred milers in eight weeks and all this insanity. Right. But really, this is all a product of hardening your mind, callousing your mind, to mm-hmm. use your phrase. And throughout the book, what what really you know makes it stand out is that. There are lessons throughout. Like this is a book in which it would be easy to think that David Goggins is the hero, but the reader is the hero, which is why.